So we're back at My Plug Life, and today we're gonna to give the car here a parking lot test, just like if you were to bring your kid. Let's see how well it does. But first up, this package is only available to those that bought the full self-driving or the enhanced autopilot. So this is gonna let you park your car perpendicular or parallel, uh, depending on your situation, and it'll look at the cars and objects around in order to do that. So first up, let's talk about what it uses to see what's around it. On the back of the car is a backup camera. It uses this to see the line on the road directly behind it. But if there is no line behind it, it needs to use parking sensors. Now there's six of these in total all around the vehicle and they work by sending out a pulse. It bounces off an object and comes back. But the limitation is that it can't see objects really close if they're low to the ground. So if you're really close to a curb, it won't see that due to the angle of the parking sensor. So here we are in the real world. Now, to get this to go, you have to be going basically less than about 10 kilometers an hour within a foot or two of the cars next to you. It's going to measure the cars with the parking sensors. You throw it in reverse, you click start, and off you go. Now, your hand's off the wheel at this point, but if you do want to take over because it gets too close to a car or something funny happens, all you have to do is put your foot down on the brake, and it's going to disable it. No harm, no foul. Now, as you can see, it's going directly back and then curves. Uh, in the real world, you may not do this. Probably what you would do is just before you do the maneuver, you're going to turn slightly out and then back in. It's a little easier to do it this way. Now, once it's decided it can't do it, it tries to re-maneuver to get a better angle. And as you can see, it's now directly straight out from the parking spot. So it's fairly easy just to back directly back into the spot, but it still does it fairly slowly. So this is very cautious. It's making sure that everything's measured properly with the parking sensors and you're not gonna hit any doors or anything like that. It makes it back to the end of the parking spot and then it disables. That's it, all done. So one more time in the parking lot, I'll let the car do it and then I'll do the exact same maneuver and let's compare the amount of time it takes. So first up, all I'm looking for is that little P logo that appears there. Once I get that, I can put it into reverse and then click the start button. Now, at this point, it's measured the distance. It knows the cars are far enough apart to know that it can fit, but it's a matter of maneuvering into that kind of place. Now, in this particular parking lot, it looks like it needs to go back and then forward and then back again in order to get into the space needed. But there are parking lots that I have gone to in situations that I have that it works very well. Now, you can give this a little bit of a hand if you angle out a little bit just before you put it into reverse. Uh, but it's a little fiddly thing. Getting it to work in the first place is really the big challenge. Once you figure that out, it's not too bad. Now, this entire maneuver that we're doing here with the car takes about 45 seconds to do. So let's see if I can beat that time. And I think I can. So here we are. The same cars around me, same parking lot, same situation. I can see that P pop up. I can put it into reverse and start the auto park. But this time I'm doing it myself. So I turn the steering wheel and off I go. Now I can get closer maybe. Uh, maybe the car doesn't like to be as close. I back up straight, no problem. It takes about 15 seconds to do this whole maneuver, which is a third of what it would do otherwise. Now I just wanna mention some limitations to the system. It is measuring objects, it's not measuring cars. So it doesn't see that car as a car, it sees it as a physical object. And in this case, what it actually did is it measured some garbage cans and thought they were vehicles or objects that it can park in between. So when it popped up, it gave me the option and hey, let's see what happens. So in this case, the parking sensors, they have that limitation that they don't see, they feel, and they feel the objects around them. And also that curve that you see there is a curved curve. It's in front of a person's house. So in this case, it doesn't recognize this as something that I can't drive onto or around. So all it's doing is measuring the two garbage cans and trying to space itself directly in between them. It also wants to be a bit closer to the one in front, giving a little bit of space to the person behind you so they can get out properly. Finish the maneuver and we're good. So when I got auto park in my car, I had a hard time getting it to work. And I know people to this day that have a hard time getting it to work and they don't use it at all because of this. Just remember what it's looking for in order to work at all. So yes, it can park on the right-hand side, and yes, it can park on the left-hand side as well, both perpendicular and parallel. But the tools it has to notice these spots are parking sensors. So your front parking sensor and your back parking sensors are used. In order to do this, you need to be about within a foot or two of your objects that it wants to measure, and you gotta be going to at least less than 10 kilometers an hour. So fairly slow, as you would be doing on a parking lot anyways. You have to drive past the spot you wanna to go to, 
and even a little bit further so it can measure the other car with the back parking sensor. Once it gets that location, it can measure the distance and that P will show up, you can throw it in reverse and you're good to go. Now, currently Tesla's going through a rewrite of their system where they're changing the way vision works. And this is a situation that can be improved if not replaced with vision. We do it with our eyes every day. If you're parking with your ears, you're making a mistake. So in the future, the side cameras, the repeaters, all the cameras around the car will be able to visually see the parking spots and it will no longer require two objects in order to make that space. So currently it's physically see, feeling those two objects in the future. It'll probably be able to see the lines on the road and be able to park in the correct position. Anyways, thanks for checking out this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, just hit the thumbs up twice and I'll see you in the next one.